Ghost Rider gets compared to Gold Striker a lot, and I have finally ridden both of these coasters, so in today's video we will be doing a little compare and contrast and seeing which one is the better coaster. Both of these rides are somewhat by GCI, Ghost Rider was by CCI but got a complete retract by GCI, and Gold Striker is a very traditional GCI layout. Both of these get awards for being amazing coasters, and since they are both on the west coast and built by the same company, they are often compared to each other. And before we start, I would like to mention that these are the only two winning coasters I have ridden. Well, why? It's kind of a long story. Apocalypse should be a given, but things happen. I haven't bothered stopping by either the Giant Dippers, nor any of the fun spots, and El Toro, well, don't get even get me started on that. <laughs> Anyways, we will be taking a deep dive into everything these two coasters have to offer. From the queue line, station theming, and forces, we will really cover it all. And that starts us off with the queue line and theming. A lot of you don't like it when I talk about this category, but in my opinion, it makes up half of the experience. Now, both of these are wooden coasters. Wood coasters are somewhat harder to theme. However, Knott's does not believe in this disadvantage. Ghost Rider sits in the absolutely immaculate land of Ghost Town. The queue line itself has great views into this land, as well as a cool entry into a tunnel. The stations of these two coasters are nearly identical. They are both wood structures that play into the whole wood coaster feeling. I like Ghost Riders better because it looks cooler and has more room on the platform, but I'm not going to count that against Gold Striker. Ghost Rider also has the added bonus of being able to see it from the road and looms over the whole Ghost Town area, allowing for views from pretty much anywhere. One thing that I have to give to Gold Striker is, I do like their logo better, so take that as you will, though it's a super minor factor. So Ghost Rider has better theming, it however lacks in operations. Both Ghost Rider and Gold Striker use GCI Timberliners, which I have to say are very comfortable train designs. On the other hand, Ghost Rider has some of the worst operations in the world. I'm talking like Six Flags X2 operations. It's that bad. <laughs> Ghost Rider can be hit or miss. I came on an absolutely dead day, and they were still running two trains, so I was quite happy. Now, the ride experiences are somewhat similar. Both coasters start out with a little pre-lift section that turns a 180 out of the station to get to the lift hill. Personally, I like Ghost Rider's pre-lift section better, it is just a right turn with some laterals, but you're going by the queue line and through some nature. Ghost Rider's pre-lift delivers slightly more laterals and a little bit more variation because you turn left and right, but I don't think it makes up for the loss of scenery. Now, as you are climbing up the lift hill, here is a fun fact. Ghost Rider is actually taller than Ghost Rider by 10 feet, but both these coasters have the same exact drop height of 108 feet. And that brings us to the next point, which coaster has a better first drop? Both of these rides have enclosed lift hills and first drops, mainly for noise reasons. This makes for great head choppers all around, and each ride really deserves a point here. Both of these drops have a slight turn into them, Gold Strikers being a bit more prevalent. Both of these drops give good pops of ejector airtime, and I think it's a little more prevalent on Gold Striker. Therefore, it has the better first drop. Gold Striker also has the advantage of a sharper turn, which provides more laterals and a pretty crazy experience pulling out of that drop. Now, out of the first drop, the layout starts to really diverge. Ghost Rider hits a camelback and comes into a 180 degree turnaround. Gold Striker hits a series of turns and a really good airtime hill, and probably the only time I ever feel true ejector besides the first drop. Okay, now here is where I need to sit you down and tell you that we are okay, and people have differing opinions, and I just have a different opinion. But it is super hard for me to feel airtime on a wedding coaster. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I have no idea if that makes sense or if other people have even had the same thought as me, but I feel like the jackhammering just makes it hard for me to feel airtime. I could be tripping straight balls, but I don't know, I just don't feel it and can't really help it. It could be the GCI Timberliners, but like, who knows. That means when Ghost Rider says it has 14 airtime moments, I really only feel like two. And Gold Striker, I really only feel it on the first drop and first airtime hill. Anyways, I do like this section on Gold Striker better because of the good pop of airtime and the sharp turns. Ghost Rider does have the camelback, but it honestly doesn't do much. The turnaround, however, is absolutely crazy. I'm going to talk about this now and mention it from here on out because this is what makes Ghost Rider stand out above every other wood coaster. Ghost Rider has a bunch of turnarounds, like a crap ton. It's basically an out and back layout in the shape of an L, if that makes any sense. Now the best part about this is, the turnarounds are barely banked, so you get the most relentless hammering lateral Gs, and that's why Ghost Rider places in my top 10. This first turnaround is one of many that gives off this feeling. Now Gold Striker's turnarounds are all heavily banked, and I honestly don't dig it. To sum up the rest of Gold Striker, it's a series of overbanked turns with a couple of airtime hills, Now that's a super watered down version of the rest of the layout, but it essentially holds true. I feel like each airtime hill delivers a little less than the prior one. The best airtime moment in the whole coaster was his first speed hill out of the first drop. The turns are good, the pacing stays solid, 
but I think the forces just kind of die off here in a way. Ghost Rider on the other hand goes ham on layout. Following this turn around, you go through an airtime-ish hill that is not very pronounced, you then hit a turnaround that once again provides all the laterals you want, before flying up into a massive turnaround that provides every single lateral that you could ever want. The coaster loses its pace a little when you are up here, but you are literally flying on unbanked track. It feels like the coaster is ramming into the left bar the entire time and just snapping to the right the entire time. It is why I have fallen in love with Ghost Rider so much. Now here, you hit the mid course break run, which is about to bring up another point. Ghost Rider is so much longer. In fact, it's a thousand feet longer, and the ride duration just goes on forever, and with the relentless lateral forces, it's a pure fun coaster. Ghost Rider doesn't have the advantage of length, but it however hauls through its entire layout and also delivers everything you could ever want in a short amount of time, so you can look at it in two ways. The thing is, Ghost Rider does not lose its pacing even with the mid-course brake run. This is probably my favorite element on the ride, but the drop off the mid-course brake run gives some insane ejector and honestly some of the only airtime on Ghost Rider. You then fly back through the structure completing similar turnarounds to what you had before hitting the ending finale of a massive helix that once again provides lateral g-forces. So those are the in-depth summaries of these two coasters. Now in my head, there is a winner. In fact, it's a very clear winner. It's so clear that there's an 11 spot jump in my rankings between these two coasters. Now hopefully I didn't give it away by the way I talked, but I think you can make your predictions now. For me, the clear winner is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is one of the most relentless coasters in terms of lateral forces that I have ever ridden. It's pure lateral city throughout the entire ride. Ghost Striker has a very different feel with the bank turns. While it also provides amazing forces, it gives off a completely different feel than Ghost Rider. Another thing to mention is Ghost Rider is leagues better in terms of roughness. Now it's not glass smooth. No wooden coaster is glass smooth, but it's more of a rattle. Ghost Striker is where you kind of draw the line at jackhammering. Now it's not painful, it's not comfortable, it's just in between. Now my roughness tolerance is not like some of the other people out there, so that is an added bonus for Ghost Rider that it makes it so much a better experience for me. I love the non bang turns on Ghost Rider, and I wouldn't trade any element with it for Gold Striker. Ghost Rider is longer, smoother, better themed, and just a more fun ride in my opinion. The only thing it truly lacks is, is operations, and you can't really count that against the coaster. Ghost Striker is by no means a bad ride, it's just less fitted to my style. The roughness takes away from it a lot, and the airtime is not my favorite force on a wooden coaster. The laterals that Ghost Rider offers from its unbing turn is not matched, at least on any coaster I have ridden, and is the reason why it runs away with the crown. That's all for today's video guys, as always make sure to like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one, have a great rest of your day, goodbye.